I'm Patrick Bailey with iQulis, and today is, well, I really don't care what day it is because I'm on vacation in the wonderful Rocky Mountains of Colorado. And in this video, I have a vacation 3D print. I printed a customizable 3D printed pool torpedo. Let's talk it over and let's see if it actually works. Okay, now I'm a crazy person who brought his 3D printer with him on vacation. Um, mostly just to do some longer prints. I'm getting ready for the homeschool conference. There's these giant T-Rexes I want to print. So I was going to kind of push a button and let them go. Because we're just staying up in here in a kind of cabiny place. A lot of power, a lot of things. And we're going and swimming and doing all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so the, the 3D printing wasn't the point. It was just to kind of catch up on prints. But they're here. And now I'm thinking, I'm thinking, there's some things you can print while on vacation that might be useful to you. And so we were poking around and I had an idea. Let's go make one of those pool uh, sinks. You know, you can you know, print something out and have it sink to the bottom of the pool. Uh, my kids are a little older, but they're going to probably indulge me. They used to do it a lot when they were kids, a little older. But now they're older, but I think they'll indulge me and test this guy out. And my idea was I was going to print something, and my thought was it was going to float. And then I would go weigh it down with quarters and do something to seal it and kind of have that. Because I figure you're on vacation, you have a lot of stuff. But if you have a 3D printer with you, which is an interesting idea, uh, and some quarters, you could probably make a pool toy. But then I started poking around, and I found someone who actually did a pool torpedo toy. And here's a link, uh, and I'll put this in the show notes, and it's on printables. And he printed this out. And I was, how is this possible? This doesn't seem like a thing, I, you know, plastic floats. Uh, well, it turns out it doesn't. So another uh, URL, you can go check it out. Uh, I, just, I was just poking around after I saw it. I was like, does can PLA sink? And it turns out it can, if you do the infill high enough. And so out of curiosity, I just kind of took some bit of filament and put it in some water and watched it drop. And I actually took uh, the pool torpedo and printed out a much smaller version, and I did it like 90% in film, which I don't think you need to go that high. But I just want to be play it safe for my first time. And it worked. A little one just went right down to the bottom. So I thought, let me go make one. Let me make it a little more fun. Let me see if I can make it customizable with at least customizing some text on it just to make it a little more interesting. So I figured out how to do an open SCAD, and I just posted it. So you can go download it. Now, if you go download this, we'll go over this here in a second with the Open SCAD. Uh, in the file, there is an STL file. Well, let me let me go over here. So, if you download this and you want to customize it, because I mean, here's the impressive IQless, you know, text. Not much to it, but you probably want to do your own. So, you want to go download the the um, download the SCAD, and then you, what you really want is the pool torpedo, the pool torpedo STL file. That's the blank one, and that's the one actually copied from Chris O'Neill, which I'm you know doing a a remix of his basically and adding this to it. So you need the, op the SCAD and that in the same folder and then you can open the, op open the SCAD and start filling with it. Okay, so here's the open SCAD. Boom. So if you download it and you run it, you'll see in just a, 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 a preview rendering, it's not going to look that good. You're just going to have that. Let me go run a real render and you just see the IQ list show up pretty good. And my first thought was just take some text, extrude it, and just kind of cut in and extract it and that would work well enough but also, it would cut a little deep because you know it's rounded, and you'd kind of have to go uh, deeper at the, in the at the center and lower at the ends. But then I thought it'd be nice to kind of curve the text around, um, which I did a little imperfectly. So I got it done; it's working. So the idea is in Open SCAD, you bring in the, the torpedo, and then you do have the text on the side. But then what you do is you make a smaller torpedo, like about, I think I'm doing 93% of the size, so shrunk in just a little bit, and you use that torpedo, the smaller one, to cut the text. And so when you cut that text, the text now is rounded on the end, and then once you have that rounded, uh, then you take that text and, again, cut it in the actual one. So it's kind of like cutting the circle out. So This might take a little while to render, so I'll, I'll, we'll let it render, and we'll probably cut different parts of the video, because I want to show kind of how it works. Okay, there we go. So you can see there's the IQ list, and it's not perfectly wrapped around, but you can see I just have it just kind of going in a little bit. So with that, if you, first of all, if you want to change it yourself, all you got to do here is, here, here's the name IQ list, uh, and if you want to make a Billy one, you just do Billy, hit that, and you can see there's the Billy, and if I rendered it, it would look a lot nicer. But with that, let's see if we can uh, show everything. So if you go, uh, so here's the, the original torpedo, so I'm going to remove that real quickly. And remove this difference. And so here we have the text. The text is just on its side, uh, extruded, rotated up, kind of in the right position. And of course, you could change the text. You could use different different fonts. That's up to you. Uh, also, I think you'd probably do the same concept with an SVG file and kind of extrude it and make some kind of icon there and do really cool stuff. But here, if I 
Well, actually, let me remove all this too. Boom, boom. We'll remove everything. So if I just run that, you can see there's Billy. And the idea is I'm gonna re remove that. But if I do that, you can see it's all straight like I mentioned. But if I go bring in a slightly smaller torpedo, see how that intersects? And my idea is I'm gonna cut that Billy off right there. So if we do a difference, we'll see how that shows up. Boom, okay, not perfect, but maybe I can do a full render. And we'll let that run. And there you go, now we got that arc, right? So now I wanna re remove that. So that's actually cutting in a little bit on that arc, and I could do that. But, oh, you know what? This could be done better. I actually could have, hmm. There's some better ways to do this. This is, this is imper imperfect, but there's some, there's, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. But now that I see this, I can think, another way but this works this works so now that I have that I can just remove all these guys and we'll do Billy so I'm gonna remove I'm gonna have the normal torpedo in here now and remove that from it. it's gonna cut in but then it just kind of cuts in the surface and I get a nice look like this which is kind of barely in you know so let's go do that we can see we have Billy and we'll run again and hopefully it works just fine okay there we go there's the Billy Okay, so I'll save this real quickly just to, to save it and show a few more things. I'll say, we'll put Billy at the end of this. Billy. Okay, so now let's bring it into a slicer. Just to show you, I'm actually not going to actually really slice this one. Okay, now we got that. Okay, so we got that in the slicer. And also, I made the size of this uh, compatible with a Prusa Mini. So it's not taller than a Prusa Mini. And it's a, you know, that's a pretty good size. I think it's a good size for a pull toy. Uh, I think the original one was a little bit bigger than that, but we downsized. We're downsizing here. But now if you do this, um, there's no need to go refinement. Usually I do 0.15, that's my typical go-to because that's, that's generic, 0.15 quality, that's what I like to do. But in here I'm doing 0.2 speed, because speed is of the essence, because we want to go play, and also it doesn't look too bad. We're not looking for real good, great detail. So go to Prusa Mini, and then go up to, I did 90%, I don't know if you need to go that high, and we'll see how fast it sinks. Maybe later on I'll do another experiment, do a 70% and see how how well it goes. But also you can see down here I got those fins, so you need a brim. Click on that brim. And then also go to print settings, and I probably want to make that brim a little bigger. In fact, I think I went to 10. So print settings, skirt and brim, brim width, 10. And then re-render that. And then we should see that's a nice brim, it's gonna hold real well. And six hours and seven minutes. And that's about what time it took. I'll, I'll go over the numbers on this, but this took about six hours of print. Um, and I like it. So with that, let's go test it out and see if it actually works. Okay, so now here we are poolside to test this thing out. And as a side note, if you're vacationing in Colorado in the mountains, it is really nice to be in the hot tub outside. And they got some out here when it's snowing, it's kind of nice. But with that, we got a pool outside, it's heated. My son has volunteered to help. So we're gonna see how well this goes, if it sinks or not. Okay, you ready? Okay, let's see how bad it sinks. Oh, it's coming back up. Oh. It sinks, but it's coming back up at 90%. Oh, maybe there's a little difference between chlorine water and regular water, maybe, huh? Maybe back to the drop, maybe we need more than 90%. <laughs> it's floating back up. It's floating back up. Alright. Huh. Okay, back to the drawing board, but it, uh, it's probably still a fun toy, but maybe I need to go more dense. Maybe just in regular water we were okay, but now we're chlorinated and all that fun stuff. Thanks, Corbin. We'll go try out some, well, maybe I'll try out some more intensity, I don't know, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so I came up here. This is the one I printed before, which is the original one, not, not the customized one. And I think it did about 40% size, 90% in film. And this was my test. And if we go over here in this bucket of water, sinks. In fact, it probably sinks a little too fast. So I thought this one was gonna sink like a rock and I'd probably have to ideally do less, like 75% or 80% or something. However, it's good to note that when, uh, when you're doing the slicer and it says 75% or 90%, it's not exactly perfectly 90%. So for example, if you went through 
we could do a test like this. And it, this is not my area of expertise. I don't do it too. I don't look into it too much. But if I change my nozzle to 0.25, it's a 90%. It's going to do the exact same lines as if it, as a 0.4 nozzle. So there's going to be more space. So 90% does actually does not actually mean exactly 90% uh, full. But so as a result, that one is obviously more dense than this one because we take this one, it's floating. So. It's one of those things when you double the size or make it bigger, it's not necessarily exactly the same density. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll go through this one, and I think I'll try it again. We'll try to print it 100% and see what happens. And even 100% doesn't really actually mean solid. Pretty near solid. We'll see, but it's been fun. So with that, uh, let's go over some numbers, a little bit last, little bit last bit numbers to go over this. So I didn't bring every piece of equipment I'd like to have brought on my trip, so I don't have things that I can. I am doing a time lapse right now, my T Rex, but it's focused on that and not this. So some of these will be estimates, and some of them are real. So um, and I kind of have to go off the numbers on on the slicer as best I can. So with this guy, it took six hours and ten minutes to print. I'm not sure how much electricity it takes because I couldn't film it all, but we know it doesn't take too much, and it weighs. And this is an estimate, because I don't have my scale with me, about 0 0.108 kilograms, based on what the slicer's telling me. And that $20 per kilogram comes out to $2.16. So all in, $2.50, which I think is, I'm, I'm pretty close to that number, so I think, we're, I think we're right on that. So now, man, this floats, amazing. Just barely, though. So I think one of my next things is going to be, kind of redo this, do 100%, and see what I can see. So, um, or, you know, another thing that might work, is just making this smaller. Maybe I'll try both. So let me try 100%, see what happens. If I don't have much success with that, I bet you if I make this 80% of its size, those lines will be closer potentially, and it'll be more dense. Just like the one that's 50% size, it's dense and it just works just fine. Um, hmm. A lot of things to think about. But with that, let's wrap this up with a reminder that 3D printing is an adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this. You can teach others. And you can make some amazing designs. And sometimes you have to do some redesigns. So, design it, engineer it. This double-sized T-Rex I'm working on is going well. I'm about 65 minutes from having the lower jaw complete. And it's looking good and holding onto the plate really well. I was worried it would break off at some point. I'm just paranoid. If all goes well with it, I will swap out to a 0.8 millimeter nozzle and try a much larger layer height to see if I can seriously cut the time down, as I would like to bring a few of them to the homeschool conference. Well, we'll see how it all turns out.